For those of you who are a little older and graduated from East Long Meadow back in the day, I would like to begin by announcing that yesterday was the 90th birthday for, what's his name again? <laughs> would, you, would you stand up please? Where is he? Oh, here he is, Joe St. Germain. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our eighth induction dinner for East Long Meadow High School Athletic Hall of Fame. At this time, I would like to introduce you to our escorts for this evening. They are all seniors, Jack David, football and basketball. They're down at my to my right. Okay, we have uh, Mackenzie Quigley, who is an indoor outdoor track star, and Mari Whitwer, field hockey and lacrosse. And singing our national anthem, we have Bryn Erickson. We all stand for you. President, if I take too much time recognizing our Hall of Fame committee. All in favor? <laughs> I disregard their request for the following reason. I'm the president. <laughs> this committee has given many hours of their valuable time to making our Hall of Fame the best. In some instances, they have contributed their own personal money to ensure that our goals are met. One of them is supporting the East Long Meadow Park and Recreation Department by providing a substantial donation to provide scholarships for boys and girls, needy boys and girls, so that they may participate in summer programs. Our committee members are as follows. Please hold your applause till the end. The president, you know. Vice President, Pat Bean. Kathy Hood, an East Long Meadow uh, school system teacher, if it wasn't, uh, it was Pat Bean and Kathy Hood who put together this dinner every year. So can we have a round of applause for them? <laughs> Louder? Have them stand. Have them stand. I, take your time. It's not time yet. <laughs> okay, Mike, you're not there yet, Mike. You know what I'm saying? He's still president. That's correct. All right, these are the members of our committee. Uh, Pete Alminas, a Hall of Fame member, chairman of the Golf Committee. Liz Keith Cleval, a Hall of Fame member, 
and on fundraising. John Courtney, East Lawn Meadow Golf Coach, Nominations Committee, and on the Golf Committee as well. Lloyd Dupree, former Treasurer, Nominations Committee. Rich Fichero, former Principal, East Lawn Meadow High School's current Chairman of the East Lawn Meadow School Committee. He is not with us this evening because he's at UMass at his class reunion. I can only imagine what that's all about. <laughs> Carl Owen, as you may recall, he's a former assistant principal uh, in Connecticut and he's many years director of the 4th of July parade. Mike Harrigan, a former teacher, he's on the awards committee and he's also a liaison with the Park and Recreation Department. Mike Rashilla, former East Long Meadow coach, fundraising committee, and also on the golf committee. Aaron Corbett, Hall of Fame member, treasurer. Ryan Corbett, Hall of Fame member, fundraising committee. Ladies and gentlemen, our East Long Meadow Athletic Hall of Fame committee, could they stand and we give them a, a round of applause, please. Oh. Forgive me, I was distracted by Mike Rashilla. Ned Obenesser is not only a Hall of Fame member, and uh, 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 a, 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 uh, our secretary, he is a man for all seasons, I'm telling you. Among his many roles, he is responsible for the beautiful program that you have in front of you. Ned. Okay. Now it is my pleasure. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, secondly, I would like to introduce all former members of the East Long Meadow uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, they, some may not be present. I think most are, however. Mr. Maz, never heard of him. Matt D'Amato, I don't see Matt here tonight, but uh, Patricia Hafey, would you stand, please, and remain standing until we get them all? Tom Benton, is he here? Okay, Tommy. Yes, I talked to you. Ned Obenesser. And the individual who coached at surviving sports swimming, Coach Dick Bowles. And Jay Shapouris, Coach Ed Majaleski. I should, I can, uh, but you can hold your applause, you can applause, whatever you want, I don't care. <laughs> I think it should be noted that Ed Majaleski was just recently inducted into the Aguam uh, High School Hall of Fame as well. Okay? Two of my great 1983 state championship golf team members, Gary Fontaine and Bobby Villeneuve. The dog, another guy that's been here so many times, I'm having trouble counting him, Gary Pomeroy. Okay, would you stand? Also, probably the most uh, respectable uh, basketball family in town, or maybe the state, Sean Butler. And I've already mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, these are our former inductees. If I missed anybody, please stand and let me know that, uh, so that we can recognize you. Is anybody? Think everybody's gotten it? Wait a minute. I'll interrupt him again. He's already standing. But Bob Mazzarello is in our Hall of Fame. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. All right. So, <laughs> thank you. Once again, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to our eighth Hall of Fame induction. And tonight we honor eight outstanding athletes and one great team. Okay? Our individual athletes include four men and four women. Our team is the 1975-1976 Boys Swim Team. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last eight years, the East Long Meadow High School Athletic Hall of Fame Committee has worked tirelessly to ensure that the induction dinner and the ceremonies that follow are a tremendous success. In addition, our nominations committee recommends candidates for consideration to the Hall of Fame. These candidates achievements are thoroughly researched to ensure their credibility. Our committee 
takes great pains, pride, I should say, and some pains too, in the fact that every inductee since the inception of the Hall of Fame has met the highest standards as outlined in our mission statement. The Hall of Fame wishes to thank the Islam Meadow Cultural Council for their generous donations. This money is placed into our scholarship funds. I would like to recognize a couple of special guests this evening. Uh, first, our uh, great superintendent of schools, Gordon Smith. Would you stand, please? And a very good athletic director that we have now, Kevin McGee. Would you stand? Also, I would like to recognize Jamie Rook, if you don't know who she is. She's the lovely lady that's running the LCAT uh, camera right over there in the back. Okay. Um, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to call to the microphone uh, a gentleman who has added much to our uh, Hall of Fame committee, and he will be reading the uh, backgrounds for each of these inductees, Mr. Carl Olin. There's no place for you to put your drink. Okay. <laughs> Dark up here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, there, you there you go. And I will... Okay. Thank you, Mr. Maz, and welcome to all the inductees, past inductees, family members, friends, guests, and anyone else who is here. We welcome you again to the 2018 East Long Meadow High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Personally, it's an honor to be able to present the inductees tonight. As each honoree is announced, their biographies will be read as they are escorted to the DS by members of the Honor Guard who are students at East Long Meadow High School. The inductee will be presented their plaques and have their pictures taken, and then we'll have an opportunity to speak to the gathering. Our first inductee for the evening from the class of 2008 is Nick Ahmed. <laughs> Nick Ahmed was a four-speed, four-sport, <laughs> Nick Ahmed was a four-sport athlete while in high school, participating in golf, football, basketball, and baseball. He was captain of both the basketball team and the baseball team in both his junior and senior years. He is a member of the 1,000-point scoring club in basketball. Nick was a multi-year All-Western Mass selection in both basketball and baseball. He was also voted the Western Mass Baseball Player of the Year in the years 2007 and 2008. Nick continued to play bas baseball for three years at UConn until he was drafted by the Atlanta Braves. In January of 2013, he was traded to the Arizona Diamondbacks where he made his debut on June 29, 2014. He exceeded the rookie limits in 2015. As the starting shortstop in 2018, this year, he batted 241 with 16 home runs, 68 RBIs, and five stolen bases. He becomes a free agent in 2019. In addition, as starting shortstop this year in 148 games in 1,240 innings this past season, Nick had a 606 fielding chances and took part in 98 double plays and had a career low of nine errors. As a result of this exceptional accomplishment at a recent ceremony, ESPN TV announced him as the National League Gold Glove Award winner at shortstop. <laughs> Nick Ahmed. Okay. Yeah, 
so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you speak. I'm gonna let you speak because you live on my street. You never wait. We uh, missed one of the points of the uh, ceremony here. We would like to ask all of the uh, inductees to please step um, down where Pat Bean, Pat, raise your hand. Down to uh, Pat Bean, and uh, she will arrange for your escorts. Thank you very much. Uh, are there captains of the swim team here? Would the captains please also go down to the uh, where Pat is? Thank you, Nick Ahmed. Thanks, Nick. All right, I hope everybody's having a good night so far tonight. Um, just want to thank um, first and foremost God for giving me the ability to play the the sports that I got to play in high school and all the way uh, growing up and continue to play now. Um, wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without him and, and the abilities he's given me. And all my family back here in the corner. Uh, my dad couldn't make it, but my mom is here and grandparents in the corner. And my beautiful wife, Amanda, and our son, Jackson, and father-in-law, Joe. So thank you guys for coming here tonight. And uh, it's just cool to celebrate uh, here tonight, especially with some former teammates of mine getting inducted as well, being Craig and Chris, uh, guys I got to play with uh, from when we were little kids growing up all the way through high school. So. Uh, thank you to everybody who put this uh, event on, and uh, hope we have a great night. Thanks. Uh, along with the award plaque that's uh, given to each one of the candidates, there's a package of uh, citations that is given to them from uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Ed Markey, uh, Representative Richard Neal. Uh, Governor uh, Charlie Baker, Angela Pupolo, Brian Ash, uh, and Eric Lesser. Thank you. Gil Condon, 1962. Gil Condon was one of the first athletes at East Meadow High School participating in four sports, soccer, football, basketball, and baseball. He was captain of both the football team and the basketball team during his junior and senior years. Gil was considered one of the best athletes in the school at that time. He was honorable mention as a basketball all-star and was an all-star in baseball. School records during those first few years are hard to find. However, archives in football show that he caught nine passes, 405 yards, seven kickoffs, and 212 yards and one after touchdown extra point. This era was void of any Western Mass tournaments. Gill played basketball on the first East Lamento High School team ever invited to a state tournament. He received both the Dartmouth Book Award and the John Stewart Memorial Award for his excellence in academics, sports, and extracurricular activities. Gill graduated from Colby College and began a 46-year career in education including 33 years as a math teacher and coach and 13 years as an adjunct professor at Bentley University before retiring in 2014. He currently resides in Reading, Mass. Gil Condon. If you see the mic shaking a little bit, you think I'm probably nervous. But it's not. I actually have uh, Parkinson's disease. And I am a little nervous, though. <laughs> I save everything. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate being here this evening. It's quite a thrill for me to be down here. I did, uh, basically, I left. Uh, uh, oh. You want me to hold the mic for you? I'll hold it. After I graduated from high school, I went to Colby College. And when I got out of Colby College, I got a job teaching right away down in Reading, Massachusetts. So I kind of moved to say that that's where we ended up going to. Then I went up to Bethlehem, New Hampshire eventually and opened up a brand new school up there 
small school, about 50 students per grade, in Bethlehem, if you know where that is. And then we came back. I was an athletic director up there, and as an athletic director down here at Reading. And then I, t I went to retire, and I said, this is not good. So a chance to teach at uh, Bentley University was a really good school. So that was quite a thrill for me. I want to, uh, of course, recognize my family over here. I think I recognize them. <laughs> I have uh, my, my wife, Pamela. Then we have uh, three children. <laughs> then they uh, have three children. And they had four children. <laughs> and then we had spouses. I also have an important person here that you don't know about. If you knew who the first principal was at East Long Meadow High School back in, uh, two, back in uh, uh, 1670, you have it before you the living president, Elwin Doubleday, the son of the first uh, principal at the high school. You know, when the uh, students came out of Birch Meadow, Birch Meadow, the golf course in Reading, out of, uh, what's the BP place? Birchland Park. Park. I had my letter from that, too. I didn't bring it. We were, uh, took only the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors to the high school. We figured it was best to let the seniors continue and finish their education there. Make it a lot easier for us to get started. And in that time span, uh, I remember we, we met one day, and everyone had to meet, uh, come together in an auditorium. And they said, they gave us our names of where we were going and the room numbers to get to. So I went up to room 205, and I walked in, and there was Fran Dutel. Is he still around? Yep. Yes. Something else. Did you imagine that? I, I had a whole career, and I come back, and he's still working at it. We had, uh, I coached football, and we had, uh, small group of students the first year because uh, there no, it really wasn't organized football in the town. So they came in pretty green. We were out to practice one day and a kid goes by on a horse, riding a horse down the street. Next day he, he was going across it. Again, he came over and went up to Coach John Cones and said, what are you guys doing out there? He didn't know anything about football. So John said, we're playing football. He said, well, what do you have to do? He said, I give you this football, and then I take it over here, and you go down this field, cut all those people, get into the end zone, turn around. Oh, that sounds easy. So he turns around, goes down, comes back. So I told you it was easy. John Coon says, now get off the horse. <laughs> I, I think I think that uh, Fran tell John Coons, Bob Troutman, the basketball coach, and uh, Bob Camp, the baseball coach, uh, very instrumental in my learning of some stuff. So I took the two years at uh, Lexington at uh, Reading as best I could, fast I could. I did a lot of activities, I had a lot of fun, and, and I was off into the, the world. So in summary, well, playing in three sports and helping on the family poultry farm. You might remember Bud's Poultry Farm on Parker Street. I uh, kept up my grades. I knew I had to important to get to college because my goal was to become a math coach and an athletic director and a coach. And all those things happened. I was president of the class, and it was an honor when we had our first graduation to stand there and introduce the crowd to the first first graduation. One other thing before we leave you, uh, sometimes I had another s skill, I guess. I could carry a music tune a little bit. So in the team that year, we started a, a quartet, barbershop quartet, and of course we named ourselves the Gay Blades. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.
Mr. Condon, you said you were nervous. I'm nervous too, but after following Mazzarella, we have nothing to worry about. So. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Danucci, 1986. Lynn Danucci competed in gymnastics her freshman through her junior years. She was the team MVP all three years and co captained the team her junior year, but during, was well, sidelined during their senior year with a back injury. She was selected all Western Mass as a sophomore and a junior. Lynn was the Western Mass champion on the vault her sophomore year and Western Mass champion on both the balance beam and the vault during her junior year. She was undefeated in the all around during the regular season her junior year and was edged out of the Western Mass all around by one tenth of one percent. Lynn was named Athlete of the Week and received the Midas Touch Award during her junior year. She continued her gymnastics career at Brown University where she competed for two years before retiring due to injury. While at Brown, Lynn was named Team MVP during her freshman year and was Ivy League Champion on the balance beam and was named to the All-Ivy First Team. And currently lives in Longmeadow, Mass. Lynn Danucci. I'm going to show my age and have to put my glasses on. So, <clears throat> fortunately, when I printed this, it's awfully small too. So I might make a mistake here. Thank you very much, though, for this honor. <clears throat> I'm humbled to stand up here with such an amazing group of athletes and in front of an amazing group of athletes who are all sitting here. Sports in general provides many life lessons for those who participate, and my experience was no exception. I learned persistence by failing to master a trick until I did it at least 100 times. I learned to be organized in order to balance the 20 to 25 hour weekly training schedule with school and a social life, small social life. And I gained a certain amount of mental fortitude by finding myself a blast on an event and needing to get a strong score for the team to win. Most important of all, I learned to enjoy my time with my teammates in the gym, including fellow ELHS Hall of Fame member Katie Farrell. Although my children aren't able to be here tonight because they are both competing at the college level, my son is a hockey player at Colby College, and my daughter is a member of the University of Virginia dance team. I know that the lessons they are learning through their experiences will help them tremendously as they move through the different stages of their lives. I'd like to thank my parents, Jack and Sharon, for their support along my journey as a gymnast. My sister, Laura, for being both a mentor and my freshman year team captain here at ELHS. My husband, Kevin Shulin, along with my extended family, my mother-in-law, Lorraine Shulin, my sister-in-law, Kelly Emery, my brother-in-law, Carl Shulin, who are all with here, here with me tonight for their love and support, especially when my body likes to remind me of my intensive training that I had years ago. Thank you. Lynn mentioned that she had small print on her paper. I uh, practiced to wipe so I wouldn't make many mistakes, and I finally found out that I couldn't read some of the words. So I, I have a secret. I went to Staples and had it, had it blown up as large as I could. <laughs> so far, it's worked. Our next conductee, Craig DeFranco, 2007. Craig Craig DeFranco was a three-sport athlete participating in hockey, baseball, and golf. He captained both the hockey team and the baseball team during his senior year. 
In hockey, Craig was selected to the all Barry division team three times and was a member of the 100-point club, scoring 48 goals and adding 52 assists. He was known to excel in penalty killing. In 2007, as captain of the baseball team, he helped to lead the team to the Western Mass Championship and was selected to the All-Western Mass second team. He compiled a 9-3 record as a pitcher over his career and played eight different positions. Craig led his golf team to impressive seasons all four years and captained the team during his sophomore, junior, and senior years. He was selected All-Western Mass three times and was a two-time Super 7 selection his junior and senior years. He continued his golf career at Springfield College, where he was College Athlete of the Week four times and first team all-conference all four years. In addition, he was named first team All-New England his senior year, leading his team to their first ever conference championship. Craig lives in East Long Meadow, teaches middle school science, and has brought his sports skills back to ELHS as the varsity baseball coach leading the team to a Valley League championship this year with six of his players being selected all Western Mass. He also is the assistant hockey coach at the high school. Craig DeBranco. Good evening, everybody. So I had a full speech prepared, and then I was told by Mr. Courtney DeFranco, keep it to two minutes, people will stop listening. So okay, we're going to keep try to keep it to two minutes here. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to congratulate all of my fellow inductees. Um, this is a great honor. I'm glad I get to share it with all of you. Um, many of you, Nick, Chris, I'm glad to call my friends and people that I've known my whole life growing up with you. It's excellent to be here with you tonight. Um, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for this great honor. I'm really, I'm touched, I'm honored that uh, you have put me into this position and um, I can't thank you enough, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank my teammates and coaches. Um, we'll start in order with golf. Coach Courtney, Coach Porowski, Coach Courtney, I love you. We were not an easy bunch, okay? <laughs> Most of the time you think of golf teams and you're like, oh, you know, they're, they're kind of reserved, they're golfers. No, we had a bunch of knuckleheads on that team and we drove him crazy. But you know what? He's still coaching to this day, so obviously it wasn't too bad. So that's important. Um, hockey, they couldn't be here tonight, but uh, Coach Martin, Coach Reed, I'm lucky enough where I still get to coach with, alongside Coach Reed. So it's great. Um, and, and I'm... Glad that they were my coaches throughout the year. Um, baseball, I want to start by thanking, of course, a couple of my teammates. Nick Ahmed, our gold glove winner, of course, making us all look good out there. <laughs> and then my brother, Kyle DeFranco. You know, a lot of people call me Kyle's older brother. And there's a reason for that, because <laughs> Kyle is a fantastic athlete. And you know, having him as my teammate was great. Um, I'd also like to thank Coach McGee. Coach McGee is here tonight, um, Coach Johnston, and also Coach Wellahan, who's here tonight. Um, they just did a fantastic job for us, and I'm sure Nick can attest to this. We had a great experience in high school with baseball, just having them out there. Um, and really the biggest thing is that now that I'm the coach at the school, Coach McGee definitely gave me the model for what it takes to run a successful baseball program. And that started with the hirings that he had with Coach Wellahan, with Coach Johnson. And he's really been my mentor the whole way. And I've learned a lot from him and all my coaches. Um, I also have in attendance with me Coach Bedard, Coach Rich Bedard, who still coaches with me. He coached me when I was little, and now he coaches with me at the high school. So it's great. I have him in attendance. And then, of course, Coach DeFranco, also known as Dad. <laughs> he was a fantastic coach for me. And really, these five guys have really made me what I am today as a coach. And I've taken a little bit from each and every one of them 
and tried to put that toward what I do now as a coach. And uh, I think that's really important. I'd also like to mention that 10 years ago, Coach McGee could tell me what I could and could not do. Fast forward to present day. He's now the athletic director. He still tells me what I can and cannot do on a daily basis. So nothing's really changed that much throughout the years. Just saying. Um, and then lastly, I really want to thank my family. Um, my mom, who's here, she's been the best. She's, she's always that person that's been there to support me. You know, with hockey, waking up at, you know, 7 o'clock games out in Pittsfield or New York, just always being there for me, always been someone who's always encouraged me and always just really been the guiding force toward what I really needed to become. So thank you, Mom. I love you. Uh, my dad, Coach DeFranco. So my dad is a fantastic guy. A lot of you know, know him here, and it's, it's great. He loves coming here, too, because he's like the mayor. He goes around, he's saying hi to everybody. This night is more for him than me. I mean, let's be honest. This night is more for him than me, and it's great because, you know, he comes, he comes down here, and the thing is is that I've learned a lot from my dad, and he's always been there for me as well. He's always been there through the good and bad times, but the thing is is that he, he loves me so much, he expects so much out of me and all of his players that, you know, he really pushed us to be the men that we needed to be, especially me and my brother, and we're all the better for it. Dad, I love you. And then finally, my brother Kyle. So Kyle goes by a lot of names. He's brother, he's teammate, but most importantly, he's also best friend. So... My brother is my best friend. He's always pushed me to be the best that I can be. And even though he surpassed me in pretty much every sport in two years from now, you're all going to hear about that. <laughs> really what it is is it's been great having someone my entire life that has been there for me, that has my back no matter what. And that's really what I have with my brother. I love you. So thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate this honor. Have a great night. Lauren Ramondi, 2007. Lauren Ramondi was a three-sport athlete participating in basketball, indoor, and outdoor track. She was selected All-Western Mass first team five times. Lauren continues to hold the school record for the 100-meter high hurdles and was Western Mass champion in both the 100-meter hurdles and the high jump while going undefeated during her senior year. She was voted best athlete that year, and her team finished as the Western Mass runner-up. Lauren was selected to participate in both the All-State and All-New England tournaments. Lauren was part of three record-breaking teams, the 4x200 meter outdoor relay, 100 meter high hurdles shuttle relay, and the high school jump relay. Each of the records still stand today. She reached the state finals in the 555 meter hurdles, 300 meter hurdles, high jump, and 4x200 meter indoor relay. Lauren went on to compete in college at UMass Lowell, where she garnered multiple New England 10 conference titles in the 100 meter hurdles and the high jump. In 2009, she was ranked sixth in Division II for high jump and was awarded the East Region Field Athlete of the Year by the U.S. Track and Field Cross Country Coaches Association at the National Championships. Lauren Ramondi. start by thanking the Hall of Fame committee for recognizing my athletic accomplishments. I'm honored and humbled by it. I also want to congratulate the other inductees that are here tonight. 
It's an honor to be going into the Hall of Fame with such an outstanding group of athletes, some of which I had the privilege to compete with during my high school career. Being part of the East Long Meadow Track and Field Program has had a significant influence on my life and has helped shape me into the person I am today. I will always cherish the memories and friends I made during this time, and I want to thank everyone who supported me during this time. If you asked me as a child, I saw myself, I would never see myself competing in track and field. I grew up playing basketball and softball, and those are sports I expected to play during high school. It wasn't until Coach Bud saw me um, practicing during basketball my freshman year and decided that he wanted to recruit me to outdoor track. Um, I had no idea what track was, no information on it, um, and after a little hesitation, I decided to give it a shot, and I'm glad I did. Um, it wasn't a thought in my mind until Bud. Um, I will be forever grateful for him, for his persistence, um, and that I took that chance. Without him, I never would have had a track career and or be standing here today. I'd like him. I'd like to thank him for sharing his knowledge and passion for the sport, and seeing the potential in me that I didn't even see in myself. Bud has the patience of a saint. I know there are probably some days that coaching me was not the easiest. Um, I could be pretty stubborn at sometimes. Some people probably say I could be now. Um, <laughs> junior year, Bud wanted me to try 55 meter hurdles, um, which I was quickly against. Uh, I trip over my two feet quite often, so I never saw myself running over hurdles. Bud was uh, pretty quick to respond with, okay, then you can run the 600 meter instead. Um, the next day I started training for hurdles. <laughs> um, and of course he was right, as hurdles became one of my best and favorite events. Bud always pushed me to be better than I was the meet before and was my biggest believer. He's a huge part of what makes the East Long Minnow track and field teams so great, and this accomplishment is as much his as mine. Next, I'd like to thank my teammates throughout the years. Many people look at track and see an individual sport, but it's so much more than that. Track is a family, and I was lucky enough to call the track team my best friends. My teammates were some of my biggest supporters and also competitors. They were tremendous motivators who helped push me during repeat sprints, encouraged me on mentally tough days of high jump training, to running with me in record-breaking relays. I'll never forget the years spent with my track family. Some of my favorite and most treasured memories were spent in a Spartan uniform. Um, I'm happy I get to share this honor with one of my teammates um, over the years, Lauren, as well. Um, last but not least, I want to thank my family, especially my parents, for unwavering support. Um, not just during track, but also my entire life. They spent countless hours traveling to meets, not only in high school, but throughout my college career, to watch me no matter what the weather, and being my biggest fans, no matter what the outcome of the meet was. I probably took years off their life when they anxiously watched me on all my hurdle races, but they were always there in the stands cheering me on. My parents cons consistently were there with words of encouragement when I wasn't happy with the results of an event. My dad would always tell me that not even the pros like Michael Jordan would have a good game every game, which I always responded with a snarky comment that Michael Jordan was still a pro. <laughs> um, even, though, even though I made those snarky comments, I still look back in those moments. Um, I appreciate those to the fullest. Um, thank you again for supporting my passion throughout the years. It means the world to me, and I love you both. Thank you again. I'm honored for this recognition. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Lauren Litcher, 2008. Lauren Litcher was a four-sport athlete participating in track, indoor track, cross-country, and skiing. She was captain of both the cross-country and track teams during her senior year. Lauren was selected first team All-Western Mass in her junior and senior years. She set school records in the mile, two-mile, and 1,000-meter runs. Although most of these records have since been broken, Lauren remains the only runner to have won the Western Mass Championship in cross-country racing for East Lamedo High School, earning her Athlete of the Week honors her senior year. After graduating, 
Lauren doubled down on her love of long distance running. She has completed 15 half marathons in both the Chicago and Boston marathons. Lauren graduated from Dartmouth College in 2012 with a major in computer science. She currently works as a technology consultant in Boston and lives in Charleston with her fiance, Lauren Lich. Thank you to the selection committee and all those who contributed to tonight's event. Congratulations to my fellow inductees, especially Lauren, my teammate. It's an honor and a privilege to be here tonight among you all, and especially the prior inductees that have come here to support us. Let me start by saying I loved running in high school. It was my outlet for meditation, the foundation of my friendships, and taught me self-discipline. After all, it takes a lot of mental energy to convince yourself that you're having fun when you're running long runs in the middle of winter. Running for me now is a lot like it was 10 years ago. But instead of hitting the pavement after a bad day at school, now it's after a stressful day at work. And instead of meeting my friends at Forest Park to run a 10K on the weekend, we're scheduling vacations to run half marathons in a different city every year. For me, running is not a sport, it's a lifestyle. And I'm so grateful for my family, my coaches, and my teammates at ELHS that formed that foundation for me. I want to echo what Lauren mentioned about our team on the track and cross country teams. We were really, truly a family. And I've not been able to replace that in my life since then. And the friendships that we made through captain's practices, through staying late and running extra miles or hanging out in the weight room because we thought that we would eventually get muscles one day, that time can never be replaced and I will value it forever. I'd like to thank my cross country coaches, Kevin McGee, who I don't know if anybody knew this, but he coached cross country for two years. <laughs> and shortly followed by Elizabeth Budd, who's the niece of our dear coach Bud as well. They taught me persistence, they taught me to challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone. And I want to personally thank McGee for being flexible. I was injured for 70% of my time with him, and he helped customize my workouts. And my dad would drive me to the gym at 5 AM, and I would do them in the pool or on the elliptical. And without that support, I never would have made it up to my senior year. I have to thank Michael Budd. He was my constant mentor over all four years seven seasons of track, and taught me to trust my gut, never to sell myself short. He always set an example of leadership, teamwork, and sportsmanship, and had a way of coaching each individual while pulling the team together at the same time. Thank you, Bud, for nominating me tonight. I wish you could be here. And thank you for your decades-long contributions to ALHS and the running community. I have to thank, of course, my parents, my mom for hosting dozens of ravenous teenagers at pasta parties, and for always being there at the finish line, despite knowing that all of my sweaty friends would give you a big hug at the end of the race. <laughs> I'd call you my biggest fan, but dad beat you out when he chased me all around Northfield Mountain in my Western Mass race to make sure I had a cheering squad the whole time. Dad, your love of running has inspired my own, and thanks for making me try out for the team instead of letting me think that I could still be a figure skater. <laughs> Finally, Alex, my fiance, who started dating me when I was training for the Boston Marathon. And if anybody knows a marathon trainer, we're not that fun <laughs> in that several months. But you stuck through it and believed in me. And I truly value your love and support, and especially the fact that you find my love of long distance running endearing. Thank you all again for this honor. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Chris Sedian, 2008. Chris Sedian was a three-sport athlete participating in football, 
basketball, and lacrosse. He was three-time All-League in All-Western Mass in football. As captain, Chris helped his team to the Western Mass Championship and as runner-up state tournament. As senior, as a senior, Chris won the Western Mass Dagny Award as Most Valuable Player, where he led Western Mass in rushing yards, 2023, TDs, 29, and tackles, 95, earning him All-State First Team honors. He was three-time All-League in lacrosse and led his captain team as captain to the Valley League Championship. In lacrosse during his senior year, Chris led the league in points, 81, and was selected to the All-Western Mass first team. He set school records in most goals and most assists in a season and most points in a career. Chris went on to play football and lacrosse at Suffield Academy, then went on to earn a bachelor's degree in physical education while lettering all four years in football for the University of New Hampshire. While there, he led his team to five straight FCS playoffs, including UNH's first ever appearance in the Division I National Championship. He had coached football at Yale and UNH before moving to Providence as the running back coach for Brown University. Chris Shetty. Thank you. Um, first off, I want to thank the East Long Meadow uh, High School uh, Hall of Fame Committee. This is an outstanding honor. East Long Meadow is a special place. Uh, it's special to everybody in this room for many different reasons. And um, it is truly an honor to, uh, to be nominated. Um, as well as sharing it with uh, my fellow uh, inductees, Craig, Nick, I wasn't going to mention you guys by name, but since you guys did, I guess I might as well, too. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, they were great teammates, and, and everybody's an outstanding athlete and uh, deserves every bit of this honor. Um, I do want to start off by uh, mentioning someone that's not here right now. Um, probably one of the most beloved East Long Meadow Spartan fans um, that I know of, um, Mo Martin, who passed away uh, about a month ago. And uh, Every football game I can imagine at East Long Meadow High School, he was sitting there in his beach chair in the end zone underneath the scoreboard. And I'm not sure what his actual uh, official role at East Long Meadow High School was, but he gave me multiple late passes for zero reason whatsoever. Um, so I just wanted to mention that quickly. Um, I'd also like to thank my family, um, who uh, I'm here with my grandfather, um, Harry Setian. Uh, the rest of the Setian clan is at my sister's. Um, uh, wedding, um, wedding, not event, because she's not getting married today. Wedding shower, there you go, wedding shower. So, uh, the favorite, and I'm pretty sure she's FaceTiming me right now, actually. So, um, but without them, I couldn't have done anything. Um, my dad never missed a game, uh, ever. Uh, he was there for losses, he was there for wins, um, and uh, the support that I got from every single person in my family has been outstanding, and I couldn't have done it without them. Um, you know, sports, and I was thinking about it on my drive home. Uh, we were, I had a game at Dartmouth today. That's why I was a little, a little late. Um, you know, sports is funny. Um, you know, everyone's uh, athletic career starts with a date, ends with a date. And um, everyone remembers the, the stats, the wins, the losses, um, the awards. Um, but to me, that dash in the middle of your dates um, should be filled with memories. Um, and you know, times you had with your friends, um, playing sports that you love. Um, and it's, it's, it's great. I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about every, every moment I had, two a days in the summer playing football, lacrosse trips, uh, basketball games, um, you know, everything. And I, I think that dash in the middle should be about your memories um, with your brothers. And it's funny, I... I um, it's thinking about every time you come back, nothing's changed, um, minus a few pounds and some facial hair, but that's about it. Um, and uh, it's a very special thing to do at East Long Meadow High School. Um, and then, uh, as you heard, I've become a coach. Um, so 
First off, I'd like to say I'm sorry to all my coaches for what I've done uh, to, to make you all mad. Um, because now I'm starting to say things, and I'm like, did I really? Did those words really just come out of my mouth? You know. Um, but I've I've been blessed and lucky to um, be coached by some of the greatest people, um, and the way I coach today is is because of them. Um, coach Raymond, uh, Coach Martin. Coach Gamir from Suffield Academy, uh, Coach Mack, Coach Maller, uh, Coach McGee, um, and uh, you know, through all my sports. And uh, it's funny, I'm in the room right now, and I've got two of my youth baseball coaches here, who I may have, may not have made angry at, at some point. <laughs> at some point, so I'm sorry again. I apologize. <laughs> um, but it really is. That, that's what it's all about is, is, is giving back. And these coaches, for very little, um, have given back. They've, they've sacrificed time with their families, um, their personal time to give to us. And uh, it's, it's, it's truly, truly uh, a blessing to have. Um, and they do it for, you know, they don't do it for the money. They do it for that aha moment where you teach a kid over and over and they don't get it, they don't get it, they don't get it. And then finally, they figure it out whether it's hitting, hitting a baseball, making a foul shot, um, getting your footwork right, they get it. And the look on their face, it just gives you goosebumps, and it's the coolest feeling in the world. Um, but, uh, again, this, this, this night is for Esau Meadow, and uh, I'm uh, very proud to be here and be a Spartan for life. And uh, I thank you all uh, for coming in this honor. Thank you. Kelby Zimmerman, 2007. Kelby Zimmerman was a two-sport athlete participating in cross-country and swimming. She broke the high school freshman course record in her freshman year at the Minichog High School meet. Kelby co-captained the swim team with her good friends Jillian Santer and Megan Flood. She was awarded All-American status in 2007 for her championship swim in the 100-yard breaststroke. In addition, Kelby held school records in the 200 individual medley, 100 breaststroke, and 200 medley relay. Kelby continued to swim while attending the University of Pennsylvania. Kelby earned her Juris Doctorate after college and clerked for the New Jersey Superior Court. Since then, she has focused on more creative pursuits moving to Vermont where she enjoys photography, writing, and brand development. She currently lives in New Hampshire with her husband and their new baby boy, Kelby Zimmerman. <laughs> Kelby was unfortunately unable to attend this evening. Accepting for Kelby is our superintendent of school, Gordon Smith. The 1975-1976 Boys Swim Team. Present from this team this evening are Mark Annitzberger, Alan Bagg, Coach Bowles, John Burney, Jay Chaporis, Brian Clark, Ken Lewis, Skip McNulty, Gary Pomeroy, Steve Runquist, Jim Seligman, and Joe Wadden. The 1975-76 boys swim team, the winningest team in the history of Eastland Meadow sports, was coached by Dick Bowles with Janet Kerr as the diving coach. They were co-league champions with a 13-1 record, captained by Jay Saporis, Ken Lewis, Rick Parker, and Steve Wisbicki. They went on to win the next three postseason tournaments, Western Mass, State, and New England. They shattered eight school records, 200 medley relay, Steve Wisbisky, Gary Pomeroy, Ken Lewis, and Alec Bagg. 
200 freestyle, Rick Parker. 200 individual medley, John Burney. 50 freestyle, Steve Wisbicki. Diving, 503.85 points, Jay Chaporis. That record still stands today. 500 freestyle, Rick Parker. 100 freestyle, Alan Bagg. 400 freestyle relay, Alan Bagg, John Burney, Steve Wisbicki, Rick Parker. Diver Jay Chaporis was also, also crushed the Western Mass record, which still stands today, he was first in the state tournament and second in the New England tournament. Jay, undefeated in the dual meets, dual meets that season, was also selected All-American in diving. E East Lamento High School e coach, teacher, Janet Kerr, was a women's coach in diving and deserves a lot of credit for the job she did as the boys diving coach, instructing our divers. Many of her divers went on to be great college divers. Seventeen members earned Western Mass Championship honors. Jay Shapouris, Ken Lewis, Rick Parker, Steve Wisbicki, John Burney, Alan Bagg, and Gary Conroy, the 1975 76 Women's Swimming Team. Good evening, everyone. Um, once again, thank you on behalf of our team to the committee and all the hard work that they do to make this possible. Um, it's really a nice event, and I know all these guys are very appreciative of what they do and to be able to come here and get together tonight, and especially, and also congratulations to all the other, other athletes. Um, so at this time, you know, for a team, you know, we would normally start to uh, thank our teammates, except they're in. <laughs> you know, to thank the coach, he's in. <laughs> and then I think even the announcers are in. So, um, but it's a, uh, you know, so I guess maybe just reminisce a little about, I don't know, for all you folks that don't know, that, uh, you know, as we went into swim season in the meets, that um, probably the one sport that, um, the coach would tell us the outcome before we even showed up. <laughs> you know, he was, uh, you know, they could figure it out. It was, uh, I'd watch it come down and he'd tell him to jump in the pool and swim 6,000 yards. And when you get out, I'll let you know what's going to happen on Friday. <laughs> 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 and that's the way it worked. And uh, it was, uh, you know, a, a great experience that we all had. And, uh, you know, I think we all carry it forward today. So once again, you know, thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, I would also uh, like to thank our coaches and uh, most especially the, the families and the parents that supported us along the way. It was a great year and a lot of fun. Coach? I wasn't really, <laughs> really wasn't ready for this, prepared to do it, but one of the boys gave me one of the jackets. It was from 1976, and I said, mine's all ripped and torn. I don't know how they kept this so nice and neat. But anyway, um, not to belabor the point, we had a great season. The swim team has, has been in operation, the boys' team, since 1965. I coached it for 35 years. They've had an outstanding record throughout all those years. This was the epitome of the best of the best. In 1976, after having a dual meet record where they lost one meet and then going on winning Western Mass, winning the state meet, and then going up and winning the New Englands, we came back and were met at the town line by the police department and had an escort back to the high school. 
where 500 people were waiting for us. Uh, swimming, swimming was number one back then. Actually, maybe number one tied with football. But anyway, <laughs> since I coached football also. Was, <laughs> but anyway, we had, we had a great time. And the kids on that team, as well as all the rest of them that I've ever coached, um, looked up, looked at each other as e as peers, as even people. It didn't matter whether you were the fourth guy in a relay or the number one guy in the diving or whatever. Everybody was dedicated to winning. We had scholar athletes that came out for our sports. You got to remember that, and all the athletics that we have. These kids are all scholar athletes. You know, they're creme de la creme. They're the people that run the businesses, the people that have gone on in life and, and done a great job for, for us as a, a, a population. But anyway, I appreciate us being inducted tonight. It was a, a wonderful thing to come here and see all these people, although I didn't recognize most of them. <laughs> very pleased to be here, and thank you very much, and thank you for the uh, inductee group. Um, good night. I got one thing to say. So, Coach Bowles was a wonderful coach. He's a brilliant guy. He got everybody to work together, the freshmen, the seniors. We had a great team commodity. So the best thing was, I remember, it was the last meet, it was like 38-38 with South Alley, and Coach said, all right, we've got to do 1-3 in a relay to win this. So he was brilliant. He split the relay up, and we got 1-3, and we won it. Congratulations, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Many like that. Thank you, guys. presented tonight will be added to the areas outside of the gym at East Long Meadow High School. When you're at the high school, stop by to visit the area. It's very rewarding and it is a testimony to the abilities and dedication of all these athletes present tonight and those past inductees. In closing, I would like to read a quote from Newt Rockney, the famous football coach at Notre Dame University which I think epitomizes the qualities of all of our inductees. One man practicing sportsmanship is better than 50 preaching it. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll do it. Not yet, we're almost done. A couple of closing remarks from the president. First of all, uh, Coach Bowles, where are you again? Hi. Oh, yeah, Coach. Listen to this, Coach. How would you like me to share a few things oh. with the audience? When we were in the locker room with Coach Tobias, Coach Dutill, Coach Modulewski, yourself and myself, share some of those stories? No. I don't think so. <laughs> You know, it's been a struggle for me tonight. I, I, you know, you realize these athletes come up and they're so... You see, what you don't realize is that in the third grade, I was the tallest. <laughs> well, I was. And that was it. <laughs> I have to tell you that each year we are honored to have the inductees, but each year the, when they speak... They are so articulate, so educated, so sincere. They are absolutely the best, and it's what our committee works hard to bring these people to us. And you, they're just, it's just one family, okay? So I think we should have a round of applause one more time for them.
Coach Courtney. Coach, how long have you been retired? 18 years. How long? Well, you actually didn't teach. I know that. But what? How long since you officially retired? 18 years. Been 18 years since you retired, and you've been golf coach all this time. See, I coached for 20 years, and he coached for 20, and now 38 years or something. He's still trying to win as many meets as we won. Right, Gary? Right, Bobby? I wish to thank Laura Shapour. Is she in the room at this time? Uh, for a wonderful venue. Okay. Her husband comes up and receives all the applause, and she's doing all the work in the back. <laughs> Uh, just a friendly reminder, our chief fundraiser for the Hall of Fame is our annual golf tournament. And for all of you golfers out there, uh, our, our tournament takes place usually in late May. And I hope all of you can support us and play. Okay. Finally, thanks to all of you for attending. And just have a great evening. Good night.